Hey math kids, today we're going to talk about uh, simultaneous equations and we're in section 1D in your book and we're going to start with example 9. It says solve the following simultaneous equations graphically. So it gives us these two and from the <clears throat> previous graphing section we you can use any of those methods that we talked about in that section to graph this. Um, so for the top one, since this is in slope-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b, we'll just start at negative 1, and then we'll use the slope, which is 3 over 1, and we'll raise 3, so 1, 2, 3, and we'll run 1, 1, so we go 1, 2, 3, over 1, and connect the dots. Now the other equation, <clears throat> we can either solve it to be in slope-intercept form, or we can use the intercept method. Um, just so I'm showing you a different method, I'm going to use the intercept method. So I'm going to plug in a 0 for x first, and that's going to leave me with y equals 3. And so we're going to cross the y-axis at 3, so we go 1, 2, 3. And then if I plug in a 0 for y, I get x plus 0 equals 3. And that leaves us with x equals 3. So if we go over 3 on the x-axis, we can see where those cross. Now, <clears throat> this method is going to work best if you use graph, graph paper and maybe like a straight edge to make sure you're drawing your lines straight. Um, this is definitely not the best exact method. Um, but we actually, on this barely legible graph that I made, we can see that it's crossing about right there, which is going to be 1, 2, or x equals 1, y equals 2. And if we want to check those answers, we can take each of those and plug them into either of the original equations and make sure we get a true statement. So if I plug in a 1 here, I'm going to get y equal, whoops, y equals 3 times 1, or not y. I'm going to plug in the value for y. So 2 equals 3 times 1. So I plugged in the value 2 for y, 1 for x, minus 1. 2 equals 3 minus 1. That's a true statement, so we know that these are true. Okay, I could have done the same thing plugging in, in the second one. All right, so now we're going to move on to example 10. And this time it wants us to solve simultaneous equations, but this time by the substitution method. So the substitution method is just what it sounds like. We're going to solve one of the equations for, for something, and then we're going to plug it into the other one. OK, so since this is already solved for y, I'm just going to use this equation and then plug it in right here for y. So I still have 2x plus 3 times y equals 16. I like to do big parentheses just to make it clear. And then I take that, since y is equal to x minus 3, I'm going to plug in x minus 3 right there. <clears throat> now from here, we just need to solve for x is our big goal, but we need to do some simplification. So we get 3x minus 9. From that, we still have this 2x out here, and this still equals 16. Combine like terms right there. So we get 5x minus 9 equals 16. From here, we just add 9. Once again, we're just trying to solve for x. And the final step of algebra for this part is divide by 5. So x equals 5. Now, that's not our final answer. <clears throat> it's a piece of our final answer. But we also need to get a y value. So I'm going to take this and plug it all the way into either of the beginning equations. I think it's going to be easier if I plug it into the top one, though. So now I'm going to get y equals 5 minus 3, and so y equals 2. And generally, we want to just write our answer as an ordered pair. And so I'm going to say my final answer is 5, 2, like that. Okay. Now, you don't absolutely have to write it as an ordered pair. We could have just kept these two right here. 
Um, and once again, we can check our answer using the same method as the previous problem, just plugging it into one of the originals. Okay. <clears throat> we're going to keep moving on. So now we're on example 11. And this time it wants us to use a different method. It's called um, elimination. So we want to solve this uh, system of equations is how I learned it and maybe how you were taught it. Uh, the book calls it simultaneous equations, so um, they're the same thing. Though. Okay, this time we want to use elimination. And what we need to do with elimination is we need to make sure that either our x's or our y's have the same number in front of them or a multiple of that number. So for example, if we had 5x and 15x, that would be fine. Now another thing we want to check, we want to make sure they have opposite signs. So if we had this situation over here, we'd want to make sure one of those is negative and one of them is positive. <clears throat> now, luckily, over here, for the actual problem we're doing, this was just an example, it doesn't have to do directly with this problem. We already have a negative 2 and a 2. So, um, in this situation, we'd have to play around with it to make it work out, but over here, it's already going to work out because we need to have a 2, a positive 2, and a negative 2, or positive and negative of the same number. Then we just add them together, like this, just like a plus sign, add them, uh, common terms. And so this is going to be 8x. The y's will cancel, negative 2y, 2y will cancel. And then right here, we just uh, add 7 and 17. We end up with 24. Do just a little bit of algebra, and we get x equals 3. Okay. Once again, that's not the full answer, so we need to take this and plug it into one of the originals. Um, it looks like both of them will be about the same, so I'll just choose the top. And then we need to solve for y. So it's going to be 15 minus 2y equals 7. Then we subtract 15. So it's going to be negative 2y equals negative 8. Move that up just a little bit. Okay, so now we just need to solve this. So we're going to divide by negative 2. And so we end up with y equals 4. Okay, we can choose to write this in an ordered pair if we want to, to make our answer you know, easy to read, or we can keep it separate like that. <clears throat> okay, now we're moving on to example 12, which is another elimination problem. So we're going to use the same method that we just used on that problem. And this one I think is going to be just a little bit harder. Okay, once again, there's simultaneous equations. We're using elimination to solve this. Notice this time, though, the x's don't have the same number. The y's don't have the same number. So what we need to do is we need to pick one of them. It doesn't matter if we choose x or y, but we want to make one of them cancel. So we're going to kind of think uh, least common multiple type thing. So I'm going to actually multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by negative 3. Now the reason why I chose those numbers is because I want this 3 and this 2 to turn into the same number. Um, but I want them to have opposite signs. They're both positive, so I need to make one of them negative. Alternatively, I could have made this 2 negative, and it would have worked out the same. Now I'm just going to distribute this 2 to everything and this negative 3 to everything on the bottom. So 2 times 3 is going to give me 6x. 2 times 4 is going to give me 8y, and then 2 times 2 is going to give me 4. Uh, if I multiply these, I get negative 6x. If I multiply these, I get positive 9y, and then negative 21. So just like on the previous problem, now we're going to add these together. Add the x's, and they cancel. Add these, and we get 17y. And then add these, and we get negative 17. Do just a tiny bit of algebra, divide by 17, and we end up with y equals negative 1. 
Once again, we need an X and a Y for our final answer. So this time I'll plug it into the bottom. So we get 2X minus 3 times negative 1 equals 7. Combine those, so 2X plus 3 equals 7. And then we just do the algebra to solve for X. Subtract 3, 2X equals 4. Divide by 2, X equals 2. And if we want to, we can write that as an ordered pair. And that's our final answer. Okay, so that's everything from that section. If you need help, make sure you come to Math Lab and calculator.